All right, we're going to keep working with identities here, and uh, the focus is going to be in this section is going to be on using algebra, which we've already been doing, but in a more advanced way. And these first few, we're going to use these even and odd trig identities. Now, I mentioned these in the last one. I showed them to you again, but we didn't uh, prove them, or we didn't wind up using them. But so these first slides are, they're actually a repeat of what we've seen before. But let me just give you a refresher here. Do you remember that um, cosine is an even function? And what that meant is if you put in negative x, you get right back to where you started. So cosine is even. And anything based off solely cosine will also be even. So secant is going to be even. Sine turns out to be odd, or if you put in a negative x, or in this case negative t, you get the same thing, but just with a negative out front. So anything else based solely on sine is also going to have to then be an odd function. So cosecant is also odd. Now, if you think of it, anything based on tangent or cotangent would have to be odd, because the cosine part of these two definitions is always just turns out to be the same thing, but the sine function part of them, they both are involve sine as well, turns into be a negative. So if that doesn't make sense, here's here our list here. Cosines are even, secant based on cosine is also even, everything else is odd. So we actually, this was in an earlier slide, so if we know secant has an angle that uh, that makes two, then if we put a negative t in there, what would happen? Well, secant is based on cosine, so it wouldn't matter. You would still get 2. And again, we saw these in earlier ones, but here's a quick refresher. So um, cotangent, if we start with a cotangent that's square root of 3, well, cotangent is based on both cosine and sine. It's going to wind up being odd. So you put in t, you get square root of 3. Well, now you're going to get out negative square root of 3. All right, so we're going to have those even and odd identities that are going to be an important part of what we're doing here. So everything's going to stay the same. We're going to take try to turn this left into the right. Now here's how we're going to do that. Um, I see that whenever they put the negative in on the x, they're basically begging us to use the even odd identities. This is not typically how we'd work with this. It's usually just x here. So if I see the negative x, then I know they're asking me to do the, the even or odd identities. A sine of negative x turns into negative sine of x. Do you see how we got from here to here? Negative x, the negative comes into the front. That's what the odd identity says. Now, we've, we've made a substitution. We've made a change. Now let's do our algebra. We could FOIL this out. This is a, um, going to create a perfect square binomial. Do you see the pattern here? Just as if this was 1 plus x times 1 minus x. We FOIL that out. We're going to get the square of the 1 and the square of the back. So the square of the front, square of the back, and then a minus in the middle. It doesn't matter that it's sine. It's going to do the same exact thing if you FOIL it. There'll be no middle term. It's going to turn into 1 minus sine squared. Do you see how it matches the, the idea? Now, 1 minus sine squared, well, we know something about that. We know that this equals 1. So another way of saying this would be 1 minus sine squared from the Pythagorean identity. We know that's true. So we can turn this into cosine squared. OK, let's go at it again here. So. I see these negative angles being put into he, these. So before I do anything else, I'm going to use the even and odd identities just to get started. So all the signs are going to turn into, well, they didn't really do it. Hold on. All the signs are going to turn into negative sine of theta. Do you see what's happened here? The negative on that inside angle just turns into a negative out front for both of these guys. The cosines won't change at all. They'll just turn right back into what they were because a negative doesn't change because they're even. So both of these just turn right back into what they had. So, so far, all we've done is we did the even and odd identities. Now, now that we've got this far, let's just do some algebra. We've made some substitutions. Is there any algebra to do? Well, let's square these in the top. If I square this, the negatives are just going to drop out. Do you agree with that? It's like a negative 1 in front. If I square a negative 1, it's just going to go away. So I could rewrite this like this. 
Now, let's take it one step further. So this here, so we have more algebra to do. There is not a natural substitution at this point. I don't know where to go. So if I'm stuck on substitution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pursue some more algebra. If I had, well, I guess I'll do it like this. If I had x squared minus y squared, you can factor that. It'd be x minus y times x plus y. So our algebra here is taking a ramp up here. Now we're going to need to use our factoring tools. This on the top, this is a perfect square binomial. I've got squares on the front, squares on the back, and a minus in the middle. So this can be factored. And that's what they've done here. Now, one further trick here. They pulled a GCF out of the bottom. They pulled out a negative. Now, why have they done all of this? Because it creates a match. So now I have sine of theta minus cosine of theta divided by a negative 1. Well, if I divide that negative 1 through, I get cosine theta minus sine of theta. It would just change all of the signs, wouldn't it? If you run a negative through, if you multiply or divide by the negative, it changes the, the signs, and I get where I needed to go. So here, we did even and odd identities first. And after that, there was really no other natural substitution, so we just started plowing away with our algebra. We factored, we pulled out a GCF, and then we just kept manipulating it until we got to where we wanted to go. Okay, let's try that again here. Um, this one may not be super intuitive to you here, but this is a perfect square binomial on the top. I have two things that can be square rooted, so if you have that, square root of the first one, well, I didn't explain it quite. The way I do it is square root of the first one, square root of the second. Write that twice. You had a minus in the middle, so that mean, so you're going to get opposite signs. So I've factored that top. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out a GCF on the bottom. Okay, so if you see where we're going, we've got it, and it's going to drop out. These are. These are now factored. You can cancel factors, and now I have a match. Now, if you look at this, you're like, I, how would I have known to start with that? Maybe you didn't. I actually looked at this for a little bit and tried to think it through before I started. You might have thought, well, let's just make a substitution and, and turn tangent into sine square or sine over or cosine. And you might eventually be able to get there, but you're, it, it just didn't naturally take me anywhere that I found useful. And so, and maybe you thought here, maybe I could have done something with sine squared minus 1. Um, but that actually isn't even a natural fit for the Pythagorean identity. So basically, I couldn't see anywhere else to go. I didn't see how those changes would help. So then I went to algebra. And then after that, it turned out to be pretty easy when I realized this is a square root and this is a square root. And there was a GCF on the bottom. Okay, so here's one. We need to get all of this down to 1. Now, yeah, I was trying to, I looked at this one before. I'm trying to think if I thought of a better way. Yeah, um, the Pythagorean identity is what I'm looking at here, but I don't think that's a direct fit. Um, yeah, it's not a direct fit. So basically, I'm stuck. And so expanding these, like I can't see any algebra that I could do. Well, not yet. So anyway, let's follow their path. I think I have an idea on a better way. But let's go with, with what they did here. So what they did is they didn't see anything natural, so they have turned this cotangent squared into its definition. So they've made a substitution here. Now, if you do this trick, usually what you're going to have to do is get a common denominator. So I made this substitution. Again, I'm not sure this is the best way, but I haven't worked it any other way, so I'm not sure. If you do this, then what you're always going to do next is get a common denominator. Couldn't I turn 1 into sine squared over sine squared? Okay, well, yeah, now what they're doing here, this is going to make a nice little change. So if I just get those over a common denominator, I get to this. Well, okay, now I'm getting somewhere. Because sine squared of x plus cosine of squared of x is 1, thanks to the Pythagorean identity. 
So they made a definition change, did some basic algebra, actually here it's almost arithmetic, and then they made that combination, and what that allowed is this numerator now, that's 1. Sine squared x plus cosine x is 1. So I'm going to make that substitution. Oh yeah, yeah, I should have seen this one at the beginning. This is an alternate form of, so sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So everything over here, we should have probably made this substitution right away. I didn't notice it at first, but... So this is the same as a rearrangement of the Pythagorean identity. So look what we've got. We've got sine squared of x over 1 over sine squared of x. Cancel them down, and we get a 1. Okay, if you're think, thinking, okay, well, it's easy to watch you do it, but if, you don't, if I don't know what to do, where do I go? I'm looking for easy algebra. What I think would have made more sense is we should have seen that right away this is sine squared of theta from the Pythagorean identity. Um, yeah, and I think there's actually, if we had done that, we could have then just distributed here, and I think we would have got there too in a little easier way. But they went another way. What they said is, okay, well, they didn't see anything there, so they turned this into its definition. If you go that approach, you're often going to need to get a common denominator, and that allowed this to drop out. So this would have been the more natural substitution to start with, and then I would have distributed it, and it would have worked. But if you didn't see that, you can always go to this definition, and that'll get you there too. Okay, the last portion of this is just going to show you that we can do algebra on trig uh, e expressions just like we could in, if they had involved x's. So if I had 2x squared plus x minus 1, you could factor that. And just because it's cosines, it doesn't change anything. We could factor it following the exact same patterns. So if I was trying to factor this, now this is an, an AC method problem, so that's a little bit... Uh, less natural, but it factors down with a little work. We could see that we get to here. Now, I'm not going to go through the AC method if you, at least not on this video. If you need that, I have that in the Algebra 1 videos, but so um, we could factor this down, but it would work, whoops, did they, it would work exactly the same if these were cosines. Now, if you're not sure, like, here's how I would, I would tell a student in a college algebra course. Use u to be the cosine of theta. And then you could rewrite this as 2u squared plus u minus 1. Now, this is easy to do, and you solve it down to here. You'd factor it down. You go, okay, now that I've done that, so if you did this, you'd get 2u plus 1, u minus 1. Okay, well, now get rid of that substitution and just replace the u's back with the cosines. So if doing it with cosine seems a little too weird, make a substitution and then do it with something you're more comfortable with. And when you get to the end, undo your substitution. Okay, now some more algebra here that this is a perfect square binomial. Okay, they're calling it difference of squares, same thing. We have a square root on the front and a square root at the back. So... Yeah, that's not how I would do it. So here's how I'd write it. So if I notice there's a square root on the front and a square root on the back, just like if I had done 4x squared minus 1, I've got a square root on the front and a square root on the back. So I would write those square roots. And then there's no middle term. So one of them gets a plus, the other one gets a minus. Okay, once again, I know this looks weird. If you don't understand what you're looking at, just change it to something you do. This has perfect squares on the front and the back, so we can just factor these. Got five. So the way I would teach this to you in Algebra 1 is write the square root of the front, write the square root of the back. Write the square root of the front, write the square root of the back. Now, there was no middle term, so they get opposite signs. So the point here is all the normal algebra rules apply. If you're not comfortable doing it with a sine function, do it with x, and then when you're done, just substitute the x out and put back in the trig function. I should be putting my little thetas on there. Just lazy. 
Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, we're simplifying using identities. I, I don't I don't like to do this because it's hard enough as it is. What I like to do is make sure you know what you're trying to obtain and you're not just like guessing what they're asking you to get to. Um, but we'll see what they're doing here. So what I think what was natural for them to see is that cosecant and cotangent are both in one of the same alternatives to the Pythagorean identity. So because of that they're both in this alternative version, they were thinking along these lines, like if we're trying to substitute. Again, I would tell you what I want you to get to, but they're just saying simplify. So this is where they were thinking because of that identity. So uh, where are we here? So they just took cosecant squared out, and so that everything was in terms, they replaced it with 1 plus cotangent squared. This came out. 1 plus cotangent squared came in, and now look how easy this was. Cotangent squared minus cotangent square, squared, they are gone, and we just get down to 1. So again, if I gave this problem to you, I would say, hey, turn this into 1. I, I wouldn't leave it unclear. You're like, well, what am I supposed to simplify it to? So, Okay, yeah, I was looking at this one before I started the video, and Sometimes, sometimes there's really, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's, I'm trying to think of an alternative way than the one I had in mind. Uh, yeah, there's nothing. Okay, so I was trying to do another trick that I'm going to show you later, but it won't work. So sometimes in math, what they'll do is they'll like give you something like this, return the left into the right, and you have like almost nothing to work with. And there's some established trick that you need to do. Um, and, and so this would not be intuitive to you, but so here's just the trick. They gave you the hint at least, which is helpful. But here's what they're saying. They're saying multiply the top and the bottom by sine 1 minus sine of theta. So I, I would not give you a problem like this without giving you a hint. Okay, so well, what good does that do me? Well, what happens when I do this? For now, I'm just going to do this. On the bottom, look what I create. If I FOIL this out, I'd get 1 minus sine squared of theta. Now, why is that helpful? Because this is cosine squared from the Pythagorean identity. So here's what I've got. Cosine of theta, 1 minus sine of theta equals cosine squared of theta. Well, why is that helpful? These are now factors. They can be factored. I can cancel that with one of those. And I have 1 minus sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay, now this is all what's wrong with the world of identities. These are the hard ones. At least they gave you a hint, but this is just a trick that a mathematician might stare at and, and give a try. This is like one of the fastest tricks you would do. Like he might go to this pretty quickly or she, whoever, but um, this is just a trick they knew. Like, well, this isn't getting me anywhere. Let me try this trick. And the trick actually turned out to work pretty quickly. What it did was it created 1 minus sine squared of theta, which may not be easy to recognize, but Pythagorean identity says it's cosine squared. I can cancel the cosines, and I get where I wanted to go. Okay, uh, getting a little harder. Hope that makes sense. Um, you may need to watch this. If you're, if you're not seeing where the tricks are, remember it's substitution algebra, substitution algebra. And in this video, that we just showed that we can really ramp that algebra up, making substitutions like thinking of sine of theta or, as, as an x. And you can do all your normal tricks with factoring and multiplication.